الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه وشروا أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing with our class 30 themes from 30 verses our journey with the book of Allah Azza wa Jal in this blessed month of Ramadan and today inshallah ta'ala we will talk about a verse in Surah Al-Baqarah and the reason why I chose this verse is because as you are aware a lot of new brothers and new sisters have entered the religion of Islam and some of them, alhamdulillah, they regularly attend our lessons. So today, alhamdulillah, we're going to talk about entering the religion of Islam completely, in totality, based upon the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا ادْخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَةً وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ Or you who believe, enter into the religion completely and do not follow the footsteps of the devil. Indeed, he is a plain and clear enemy to you. And there are many benefits in this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands that we enter into the religion of Islam in totality. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dkhulu fi silmi kafa. And this is very important brothers and sisters. Because it is not for us to try and change the religion or mold the religion to suit our personalities or our desires. The religion of Islam is the religion that was chosen by Allah for mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Inna deena inda Allah al Islam. The religion accepted by Allah is Al-Islam. The only religion with Allah is Al-Islam. And Allah Azza wa Jalla He said in another verse, وَمَن يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهِ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Whoever desires a religion other than the religion of Islam, it will never be accepted from them. And in the hereafter, they will be from the losers. Islam is the religion that Allah revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. And Islam in the general sense means Al-Istislam lillahi bit tawheed wal inqiyadahu bit ta'a wal bara'atu min al-shirk Islam in the general sense it means to submit and to surrender to Allah with a tawheed by worshipping Him alone and to yield obediently to Him and to free ourselves of a shirk. That is Al Islam. That is the religion that every prophet and every messenger came with. From the first prophet, Adam alayhi salatu was salam. To the last Prophet and Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the first Messenger. Who is the first Messenger? Adam. No. Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. Yes. The first Messenger was Nuh, Noah alayhi salatu wa salam. Who is the first Prophet? Adam was a Prophet. Adam was the first Prophet. And who's the last Prophet and Messenger? Tafadl, Naam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And ikhwanam, some people, sadly, they look for an interpretation of Islam that suits their lifestyle. Or suits them, depending upon where they are in society. And this is a clear mistake because we are commanded to believe in the religion that Allah revealed to the Prophet وسلم, the way Allah commanded us to practice the religion of Islam. And there's a beautiful statement that came from Al Imam al Shafi'i, Rahimahullah, Muhammad ibn Idris, one of the Imams of the religion, highlighting this point when he said, Amantu billah. He said, I believe in Allah based upon that which comes from Allah, the way Allah intended me for me to believe in Him. He said, I believe in Allah based upon what has come from Allah in the way that Allah intended for me to believe in Him. Yes, not how you choose, not how you pick. And he said, "Amantu bi Rasulillah." I believe in the Messenger of Allah. Bima jaa'an Rasulillah, based upon what has come from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ala murad Rasulillah. I believe in the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, based upon what has come from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the way that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, intended. So this religion it belongs to Allah. This religion. It belongs to Allah Azza wa Jalla. It does not belong to me. It does not belong to you. It does not belong to any human being. This is Allah's religion. Inna dina and Allah al Islam. And in our time, brothers and sisters, especially in some of the Western lands like America, because you have some religious leaders that are trying to change the religion to suit the society that we live, and they are voicing some dangerous ideas. As it relates to critical issues, issues that Alhamdulillah the Quran has clearly spoken about, that the Sunnah of the Prophet has is clearly addressed, and the Muslims have unanimously agreed concerning that. But they want to water down the religion to make their lives easy. And that will bring nothing but disaster and chaos. And that's one of the reasons as well why we, ch why we chose. That is one of the reasons as well why we chose to talk about this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 208 Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dkhulu fi silmi kaafa wa la tattabi'u khutuwaat al-shaytan innahu lakum aduwum mubeen Oh you will believe enter into the religion of Islam completely and do not follow the footsteps of the devil Verily, he is a clear enemy to you. And we will read from the tafsir of Imam al-Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala. We will read from the tafsir for this class, because as you know, we've alternated between the books of tafsir. Now, and Imam al-Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, هَذَا أَمْرُ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنْ يَدْخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَةً this is a command from Allah the Most High to the believers to enter into the religion in totality. What does it mean to enter into the religion with totality? And this is one of the explanations for the word kaf. Some of Ahlul Ilm, some of the Mufassirun, the scholars of Tafsir, they say it means jami'an. All of you should enter into the religion of Islam. لكن الله عالم هذا الذي رجحه السعد وغيره من أهل العلم. It means here. في جميع شرائع الدين enter into all of the legislative rulings of the religion ولا يتركوا منها شيئا and do not leave any of them if you know it's from the religion you have to accept it you don't have a choice if you know it's from the religion you don't have a choice don't say I think don't say I feel don't say maybe don't say my wife wants such and such or my husband don't like this. No. If it's from the religion of Islam, it's from the religion of Islam. You cannot change that. Naam. To enter into all of the legislative rulings of the religion and to not abandon any of them. 
وأن لا يكون ممن اتخذ إلهه هواه and Allah Azza wa Jalla Subhanahu wa Taala is commanding us to not be from those people who took their desires as a god besides Allah. May Allah protect us from that. Because there are people who take their desires as a god. And a sign of that, and Imam Sa'di he said, "In wafaq al-amr al-mashru, hawahu fa'ala, when khalafu tarakum." If the legislated affair from the religion agrees with their desires, then they do it. So if it's good for them, they say, okay, I'm going to do it. It agrees with my desires. But if it opposes their desires, they abandon it. They say, it's not for me. Or they may come with all types of excuses. We're in America. So the religion of Allah is different for America. The religion of Allah was revealed for every place and every time. Don't listen to some people. Naam. You had a graduate of Medina saying the religion Allah Azza wa did not reveal the Quran for us in America. Hadha min abdal al-abatin. That is from the clearest of falsehood. Because Allah said in the Quran, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. He said, this day I perfected your religion for you. And I completed my favor upon you, and I chose for all of you Islam as a religion, the whole of mankind. He never said there's a difference between, you know, American Muslims and Muslims in the Middle East, or Muslims in China, or Muslims in Europe, or anywhere in the world. Allah said, lakum Islam And I'm pleased with Islam as a religion for you. That's clear, right? That is why we do not want to hear anyone coming and saying we need a new madhab, we need a new school of jurisprudence for us in America. Like some of them claim that they came with a new madhab and they weren't even a scholar of Islam. And Imam Sa'di rahimahullah he said بَلِ الْوَاجِبِ أَنْ يَكُونَ الْهَوَى تَبَعًا لِلْدِينِ That which is obligatory upon all of us is that our desires are in accordance to the religion. And no doubt, brothers and sisters, we're human beings. None of us are angels. And we keep emphasizing this point. We are not malaika. The angels, Allah said about them, لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ The angels, they do not disobey Allah. The angels, they do not disobey Allah when He commands them. And they do what they have been instructed. That's the angels. As for us as human beings, نعم, we are prone to fall into error and mistakes. And if we do, then we have to repent to Allah Azawajal. But I want to emphasize this point because sometimes when people have a weakness, they try and justify it religiously. And this is very dangerous. If you have a weakness, just recognize and acknowledge it's a weakness. نعم, and we make dua to Allah Azawajal to rectify that. And you can work on it. When you justify it religiously, it becomes even more hated to Allah Because now you're trying to argue for falsehood religiously. And a person can be falling into bid'ah, innovation, or even worse than that. May Allah protect us from it. And I'll give an example, Ikhwan. At the time of the Prophet Wasallam, like we find in Bukhari and other than Bukhari, the narration about one of the companions, Utiya and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a man, Qanshari, who had drank alcohol at that time. And we know alcohol is haram, right? That's clear to everyone? Now, alcohol is haram. Clear. Look at the position of the companions. So they brought this man to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who had drank alcohol. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, فَمِنَّ الضَّارِ بِيَدِهِ And this man, he was punished with the hand. Abu Huraira said, some of us beat him with our hands, some of us beat him with our shoes, and some of us beat him with our garments. فَلَمَّنْ صَرَفْ When this man, he departed, some of the people, they said, أَخْزَاكَ اللَّهِ May Allah humiliate you. And in some narrations, some of them started to curse him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet ﷺ, he said, 
Do not say this. Do not supplicate for Allah to humiliate your brother. Do not curse your brother. Do not aid the devil against your brother. And in one version he said, I know him to love Allah and his messenger. Look. He said, I know this man. Because the man was punished. He never tried to justify his behavior. And we know punishment is a purification and an expiation for the sin. It's a kafara. He never tried to justify it. In our time, you have people, they may try and come and say, you know what? You know, marijuana. And you have some people, it comes from the earth. Like the false Mahdi in Philadelphia, the false prophet. Yes, you met him right now, did you? You met him? We have one, a false prophet here. Now, in Philadelphia, he claims to be a prophet. May Allah guide him. I don't know, maybe he's insane. May Allah protect us from his insanity. And he's a troll online. He trolls our accounts. But, and we've tried to give him da'wah. We've explained to him and clarified to him. Can't even read the Quran and claims to be the Mahdi and claims to be the Messenger of Allah. Claims to be many things. Totally ignorant. But he tries to justify the use of marijuana that it came from the earth. So did heroin. So Nam, and also Ikhwan, the difference between, look, the Prophet said, said about this man that was punished for drinking alcohol, but he was from the believers. He said, I know him to love Allah and his messenger. But those who twisted the religion and tried to distort it, and they offered a twisted interpretation of it. Even though these people, they were known for their prayer. They were known for their fasting. They were known for their recitation of the Quran. The Prophet Sallallahu said about them, he said they're dogs of the hellfire. Kirab and Nam, the Khawarij. You see the difference? The one individual, he acknowledged it. He accepted it. The punishment. The others, the Khawarij, they try and justify religiously their deviation. Bid'ah. And that is why the Salaf they said, Al Bid'atu. A harbu ila iblis min al ma'asiyah. Innovation is more beloved to the devil than sin. Because sin, you go to a sinner, the majority of the times, you say, Ya akhi, brother or sister, this is haram. They'll say, You know, I know. I'm just weak right now. Make dua for me. May Allah Azza guide us and them. However, the innovator believes they're upon the truth. You go to them, this is not correct. They say, no, this verse, it states such and such. I have this proof and this evidence. That is why there's a big difference. So look, Allah with your brothers and sisters, commands us to enter into the religion in totality. And that is why even when we have shortcomings, naam, we still adhere to the Quran and the Sunnah with understanding of the Salaf. We don't now say, I'm going to the Masajid where we know they're upon innovation because, you know, I feel comfortable there. Because they're not going to say anything to me if I pull up to Jum'ah blasting music. No one's going to advise me. Or if I show up and I'm clearly uncovered with tabarruj, no one's going to give me nasiha. That's dangerous. Because now a person, it appears that they're looking for some type of religious accommodation. May Allah protect us from that. It's better that you fall short and you be patient with the advice of those who love you and want good for you. Naam. And that is why Imam Ahmed rahimahullah used to say, Fusaq wa ahli sunnah. The sinners from amongst the people of the Sunnah, they are better than the worshippers from the people of innovation. And again, we know sin is hated to Allah as well. It's just that one is worse than the other. There are levels to, the, to those things. Disbelief is the most hated thing to Allah Azawajal. After that, bid'ah. After that, ma'asiyah. All of them are hated to Allah Azawajal. And may Allah protect us from all of them. Because, no doubt, when Allah said, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ 
The ulama they derive from that, they say in order to enter the religion of Allah in totality, completely, you have to oppose the paths of the devil. You have to oppose the paths of the devil. The devil comes to you with shirk and kufr. If you get over that hurdle, he doesn't give up. He comes back, like Ibn al-Qayyim said, with bid'ah, innovation. He tries to fool you to innovate in the religion of Allah Azawajal. If you get over that hurdle, he comes to you with the major sins. And he continues. Because he's cunning and conniving. And likewise, Ikhwan, another benefit from that, Shaykh ibn Uthaymeen derived it. He said, the prohibition of imitating the non-Muslims. Because imitating them in that which is specific to them is from the turaq of the shaitan. And that again, the young brothers, the shabab, the look and the appearance, do not imitate the non-Muslims. Ah, some of the youth who stop combing their hair, imitating these drill rappers and this street culture that is so strong. Now, and as we said, in order for us to change our surroundings, we have to go to war with the culture that created it. And again, that culture is from the footsteps of the devil. And we mentioned before, the head of the table of all this munkar is the shaitan. That's the CEO of everything. All the immorality and indecency that we see in society. And corruption and chaos. Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen said, Naam. When Allah Azzawajal said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dkhulu fi silmi kafa wa la tattabi'u khutuwati shaytan Do not follow the footsteps of the devil. He said the prohibition of imitating the non-Muslims and that which is specific to them. So I said to some of the shabab, Who do you love more? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or these drill rappers? They said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Tayyib, did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leave his hair like that? They said no. I said, Khalash, you've answered the question. It's over. Now, enter into the religion in totality, in your belief, in your worship, in your character, in your conduct, and even if it relates to appearance, if there's something that is legislated, we take it. We take it, yes. Somebody may say, even in appearance. Now, let's give an example. The Prophet Wasallam, he cursed, the wasil and the musawsila. The woman that has extensions in her hair and the one that places it in the hair. That's appearance, right? Somebody may say, but that's what the people they do here. That person is cursed. May Allah protect us from that. Putting extensions in the hair, it earns the curse of Allah. And what does that mean? That means that it's a major sin because a curse Allah is cursing an individual, it means at-tarq, what ibhad, to be expelled and distanced from the mercy of Allah. That person's on the verge of their destruction. That person is upon the verge of their destruction. Was that weave that deep? And that is why we advise anyone who is involved in that to get away from it. To get away from it, and alhamdulillah there is sufficient in that which is halal. And Imam Sa'di said, Bal il wajib an yakun al hawa taba'an li deen. It is obligatory that our desires are in accordance to the religion. Wa an yaf'ala kullama yaqdir alayhi min af'al al khayr. And a person should do everything that they are able from the actions of good. And what they are unable to do they should still adhere to that, they abide by it. Yes, if you're unable to do it, you still say it. that's from the religion. But, They have the intention to do it, and they attain it with their, through their intention. And when Allah is commanding us to enter the religion in totality, Naam, it is not possible, it is not conceived except by opposing the pathways of the devil. And again, you may have people, brothers and sisters, that come to you and they may quote to you verses or they may claim to be a scholar or they may claim 
to be this and that, or they may have degrees, or PhDs, or other than that. But they beautify falsehood. And you know that that falsehood goes against the Quran and the Sunnah. Then you reject it. Because the Prophet Sallallahu he said, there will be du'atun ala abwabi jahannam. There will be callers to the gates of the hellfire. And he described them. He said, they are from min jildatina. He said they're from us and they speak with our tongue. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Du'atun ala abwabi jahannam. Call us to the gates of the hellfire. Man ajabum ilayha qadafuhu fiha. Whoever answers them in that, then they will throw them into the fire. May Allah protect us from that. Now, so you may have people coming to you. And they might try and call you away from what you know to be the truth. And they may claim this and that and have accolades or titles. Alhamdulillah, this one verse is sufficient for you. And Allah in the, in the next verse, He even warns about that deviation of the guidance after the proof has been established upon us. Like in Qabla Dalik, Allah said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا ادْخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَّةً وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُّبِينٌ Oh, you who believe, enter into the religion of Islam completely. Do not follow the footsteps of the devil. Verily, is a clear enemy to you. And Imam Sa'adi said, وَلَعَدُوا الْمُبِينُ Your clear enemy, the devil. لَا يَأْمُرُ إِلَّا بِالسُّوءٌ Only instructs you to do evil. Your enemy, Ikhwan, you know your enemy. Your enemy just wants to hurt you, wants to see you fall. And the shaitan wants to see us fall in the worst way possible. He wants us to be in the hellfire along with him. May Allah protect us from that. And if we follow the shaitan, or if we follow those who are doing the devil's work, and we end up in hell, the devil will say, I have no authority over you. The devil will free himself from us. I had no authority over you. I didn't force you. You made your own decisions. You chose that. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ The devil is your clear and plain enemy. Your enemy only commands with evil and immorality. وَمَا بِهِ الضَّرَرْ عَلَيْكُمْ And what's going to harm you in this world and the hereafter. وَلَمَّا كَانَ الْعَبْدِ لَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَقَعَ مِنْهُ خَلَلْ وَزَلَلْ قَالَ تَعَالَى And because we're going to make mistakes, and we're going to slip, Allah Azza wa Jalla said in the next verse, فَإِنْ زَلَلْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْكُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ فَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ And if you know, نعم, and if you were to deviate after clear proofs have come to you, then know that Allah is the Almighty, the All-Wise. Naam. And Imam Sa'adi said, explain that verse, ala ilmin wa yaqeen. If you are upon knowledge and yaqeen, naam. And the proofs, alhamdulillah, Quran and Sunnah, we have them. Fahm al-Sahaba, we have them. Especially those who say that they understand the way of the Salaf and Salafiyya. Then you understand the religion of Allah because Salafiyya is Islam. And Islam is Salafiyya. The synonymous terms. Then you have knowledge and you should have certainty. Now, if you deviate from that, know that Allah Azza wa Jalla subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Almighty, the wise. And know that Allah threatens to punish those who disobey him and those who transgress against his commands. May Allah protect us from that. Allah Azzawajal said, فَإِن زَلَلْتُم مِّن بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْكُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ فَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Naam. And also in that ikhwan, yes, فِيهِ مِنَ الْوَعِيدِ الشَّدِيدِ وَالتَّخْوِيفِ مَا يُوجِبُ تَرْكَ الزَّلَلِ This is a severe threat. And it should frighten a person to leave off those errors. To leave off those, those slips. Naam. And to make tawbah and repent. So if somebody was upon the bid'ah, if you're upon bid'ah, repent. Come back before it's too late. 
If you are upon disobedience, repent, come back before it's too late. فَإِن زَلَلْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْكُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ فَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ And if you went astray, if you deviated, if you turned away, after clear proofs came to you, then know that Allah Azza wa Jal is the Almighty, the All-Wise. Yes, Al-Hakim, Al-Aziz, Al-Qahir. Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Almighty, He conquers everything. And if Allah punishes a person, no one can repel it. And may Allah protect us from that. And Al-Hakim, the All-Wise, and his wisdom necessitates that he punishes the disobedience, that he punishes the disobedient and the, those who transgress. Now, and alhamdulillah, with that we will stop. We ask Allah to bless us to die upon Islam and the Sunnah.